Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, and in this video, I want to go through a build guide or build an outline for a system. This system will be targeted towards a user that wants to have a high-end gaming experience and who will also be using their system for heavy workstation tasks such as video editing and rendering, 3D modeling, running virtual machines, etc. Now for this build, I will be targeting the $2,000 price point. This is a build where the price or budget isn't the user's first priority. Instead, a system comprised with the following components to offer great capability is. I know not everyone can afford to build a PC like this, so I'll probably do a $500 or $1000 build guide. If you guys want to let me know which one you're interested in, just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll make a video depending on what kind of answers I get. One important thing that I want to mention was that if you're interested in building a PC like this, but want to change or add stuff to it, then you will definitely be able to do that. You don't necessarily have to use these exact components, and you can use this video as a guideline to get you started and get you on the right path. Also keep in mind that the corresponding prices for each component are always subjected to change, and prices could vary depending on where you are in the world, and what time you're also watching this video. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into this build. For the CPU, I decided to go with the Intel Core i7-6800K. Now this processor here is based on Intel's 14 nanometer Broadwell E architecture that was released in the second quarter of 2016. When it comes to specs, this thing is no joke. This is a 6 core processor with hyperthreading enabled for a total of 12 threads. It has a processor base frequency of 3.4 GHz and has the capability to turbo up to 3.8 GHz out of the box. But since this is a K-skewed processor, which means it has an unlocked multiplier, the user will have the ability to overclock manually. Furthermore, this processor comes equipped with 15 megabytes of level 3 cache, and along with that, it has a TDP of 140 watts. So with this processor, you will easily be able to throw some heavy CPU-related jobs at it, and the 12 threads will allow for sufficient multitasking. Programs like Adobe Premiere, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, file compression software will all benefit from the availability of 12 threads. The programs I just mentioned will adequately utilize all the threads to finish their jobs quickly. Now when it comes to gaming, one might say that this processor is quite overkill, and that you don't need 6 uh, hyper-threaded cores for gaming. Well if this was 3 or 4 years ago, then yes, I would have agreed with that statement 100%. However, it's 2016 now, newer graphics engines and the implementation of lower level APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan show us that games are in fact using more than 4 threads. So not only will the workstation tasks be taking advantage of the higher thread count, but games will also benefit from them too. In addition, you will be able to pair any GPU with this processor and not have to worry about whether or not the card will be bottlenecked. In my opinion, the 6800K offers the best bang for your buck in this Broadwell E lineup, as opposed to its bigger counterparts like the 6900K or the 6950X, which cost significantly more. Now since this build includes a K-skewed processor, many users will be taking advantage of its unlocked multiplier. Also since the 6800K doesn't come with a stock cooler, an aftermarket cooler solution is needed. Taking into consideration of this processor's TDP, you will need a beefy cooler to keep its temps within an acceptable range. That is where the Corsair H100i comes into play. This is a closed loop 240mm dual fan radiator which has a large copper base for its CPU base block that will cover more surface area for superior cooling performance. The all-in-one liquid cooler comes equipped with two Corsair SP120 fans which are optimized for static pressure so therefore that will help them in pushing and moving air between the radiator fins. The fans included are 4 pin PWM fans, and along with that, you get Corsair Link, which will allow you to control the fans, monitor the temperature, and customize the RGB LED on the CPU block so you can match your build's theme. So, a great cooler, which will help keep the processor cool, provide you with great overclocking capability, and make your setup look elegantly pleasing. For the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte GA X99 Ultra Gaming, which has the LGA 2011 V3 socket. Guys, when it comes to motherboards, this board has it all, with plenty of great features, expansion slots, and in general, offers remarkable build quality from a reputable brand. This board will give you plenty of options and ports in the rear I.O., such as an USB 3.1 Type-C port, 6 USB 3.0 ports, 
dual gigabit LAN ports, optical audio, built-in Wi-Fi antenna jacks, and HD audio. It's got four PCIe X16 slots, one PCIe X1 slot, and an M.2 slot, and 10 SATA ports. So, therefore, you will be able to hook up as many drives as you want, install multiple expansion cards, and also have the capability for a two- or three-way multi-GPU setup. Out of the box, this thing is ready for Intel's Broadwell E processors, so you don't have to worry about flashing the BIOS before you can use your 6800K. There's also so many more features that are included with this motherboard from tuning software, monitoring software, and cloud station utilities. You can check out the product page for this motherboard down below because there are so many features that I won't be able to include them in this video. Aside from the great features, this motherboard looks very visually impressive and offers some great options aesthetically. All around the board, you have ambient RGB LEDs from the RAM slots, PCIe slots, and the back I.O. Also, this motherboard includes onboard headers for aftermarket LED strips. How cool is that? Visual setups for personal computers are taken quite seriously these days, and Gigabyte has you covered. The onboard audio is quite impressive, with an isolated chip design to prevent all that static interference from the rest of the components, ruining your listening experience. So overall, this motherboard has an extensive amount of features and options that the user can take advantage of to satisfy their needs. Moving on to system memory, I decided to go with quad sticks of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance LPX series. One of the reasons why I decided to go with 4 sticks as opposed to 2 is so that you can use this kit of RAM in a quad channel configuration. Also, since the motherboard has 8 slots for memory modules, you will be able to add more in the future if you wish to do so. This kit of RAM has a capacity of 32GB, is clocked at 24MHz, and has a cast latency of 14 so you won't have issues when it comes to multitasking. The memory modules themselves have some pretty sleek looking heat spreaders that are colored black. You know, nothing really crazy, just a simple design that looks good. For the storage, we've actually got two components here. The first component I will talk about is the Samsung 850 EVO 500GB solid state drive. This is a fast, solid state drive that has a max sequential read speed of up to 540 megabytes per second and a max sequ sequential write speed of up to 520 megabytes per second. This solid state drive also uses Samsung's 3D VNAN technology, which stacks 32 cell layers vertically, which results in higher density and better performance, utilizing a smaller footprint. On this solid state drive, you will be able to install your operating system, some of your main applications and programs, as well as have the room to install some of your favorite and most played games. The secondary storage solution in this build will be a Western Digital Caviar Black 2TB 7200 RPM hard drive, which will hold the rest of your video game library and other files. Since this build is also for someone who will be doing a lot of content creation, having a mass storage device in their system is a necessity. Therefore, you will be able to work with lots of projects and not have to worry about filling up storage space. The graphics card in this build consists of a Zotac GTX 1080 Amp Edition, this is one of the fastest graphics cards currently on the market, and it's packing quite a lot of power. The GTX 1080 is based on NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, rocking the GP104 chip, which has 2560 CUDA cores. This graphics card has 8GB of GDDR5X memory, which is faster than your standard G5 memory. It also has a 256-bit memory bandwidth bus. Out of the box, this GPU is clocked at 1683 MHz and has the ability to automatically boost itself to 1822 MHz. When it comes to thermals and acoustics, Zotac has you covered with their custom Ice Storm cooler that will allow for adequate cooling when this card will be operating under load and at the same time keeping things quiet so your experience isn't ruined. If you're someone that is looking for a high-end gaming experience, then look no further because the Zotac GTX 1080 Amp Edition will deliver just that. With this card, one can expect to game not just at 1080p, but also be able to max out games at 1440p Quad HD resolution. With a few compromises and settings, you will also be able to play games at 4K pretty comfortably. Not only that, but this card will deliver a high fidelity VR gaming experience. So whether it's a high refresh rate monitor, 4K gaming, a VR headset for VR gaming, or a multi-monitor setup, the GTX 1080 has the horsepower to provide you with an amazing experience. For the power supply, I went with the EVGA G2 650W 80 Plus Gold Certified Fully Modular Power Supply. 
This is a high quality unit built by EVGA using exceptional components within it, and built durably. With this power supply, you have ample headroom for overclocking, and also have room for expansion, such as hard drives, SSDs, or an expansion card. Since this power supply is fully modular, that means you will only have to use the cables that you need, which will therefore reduce clutter and assist in cable management. Also, since I mentioned earlier that people like to customize their setups visually, you can even buy some custom cables and use those instead of the ones that are included with this power supply. EVGA are known for their exceptional customer service, and with this power supply, you're getting a 10-year warranty, which should have you covered for a very long time. Now finally for the case, I decided to go with the Fantex Antho Pro M, which is a mid-towered chassis. Now when it comes to cases, in a build, this is where you have the freedom to choose whatever you want. Now there wasn't really any particular reason why I chose this case, only that it fit within the budget I laid out, and I think it offers pretty good value for its price. You, you can choose whatever case you want as long as it has proper mounting solution, uh, location for a 240mm radiator, can support an ATX sized motherboard, and has enough room for a GTX 1080 since it's a pretty big cart. The Fantex Anthro Pro M, a case which has styling that I personally am very fond of. It doesn't have anything too crazy or flashy going on, it's a nice sleek black design with a large acrylic window for a side panel. So you can show off all the, all the components inside your system. It's a simple design, but it works, and I'm sure many users can appreciate the simple layout as it can help with whatever color theme you're aiming for. This case has quite a few mounting locations for fans, which will help with airflow and keep your components nice and cool. There's also lots of room to work inside, so you can have the nice smooth and relaxed experience when building inside this case. The versatility of a case is something many users desire, and Fantex didn't forget that by allowing you to add Things, additional things like hard drive bay mounts or giving you the freedom to remove the f a five and a quarter bay if you won't be using an optical drive. Cable management will be an easy task thanks to all the cable management holes, loops, and the power supply shroud that will help hide the clutter of cables running from the power supply. Overall, this is a fantastic case that has so much to offer at a decently low price. At this point, I have covered all the parts that you will need in order to build yourself a PC that can you can use for heavy workstation tasks and high-end gaming. I will have a PC part picker page link down below so you can see the total cost of the system and the breakdown of the individual parts. I'll also leave some product page links for those who are interested in reading up on some of the parts I have included in this build. Well guys, that pretty much covers this $2000 high-end gaming and workstation PC build guide. I hope that this video helped you out and that you found it informative. Leave any questions or comments down below, and if you are interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.